Hello, friends. Welcome back to Meadows Storytime. It is March already, and March is Women's History Month, so I wanted to share with you this story, Girl Running, which is a story about Bobby Gibbs and the Boston Marathon. This is a true story, so keep that in mind as we read together. Bobby Gibb must wear a skirt to school because she is a girl. She is not allowed to run on the school's track team because those are the rules and rules are rules. But after school, Bobby leaves the rules behind. She changes into pants and runs in the woods. Her feet crunch on frozen ground. She loves to twist through the trees like a bounding deer. The wind rushes past her ears and she is fast. Every spring, the Boston Marathon winds through a neighborhood not far from Bobby's house. One year, she goes to watch, 26.2 miles. Can people even run that far? Here comes the runners. Bobby's legs itch to join the race. The day after the marathon, Bobby starts to train. She has no running shoes, no exercise clothes, but that doesn't stop Bobby. She laces on sturdy nurse's shoes and starts to run. She runs along city roads covering longer distances every day. People stare. Is that a girl running? Bobby runs faster to escape their stares, but mostly she runs because it makes her feel free. In the summer, Bobby takes a trip across the country. Each day she finds a place to run. She laces on her nurse's shoes and runs up and down rolling hills in Pennsylvania, next to wide cornfields in Indiana, along mountain trails in Colorado, all on the wet beach in California. I have run across an entire continent, she crows. Winter back in Boston brings bitter cold. But it doesn't stop Bobby. She swaps her nurse's shoes for boots and wears two pairs of mittens. She runs through snow and ice. Now, 15 or 20 miles is an easy day of running. Sometimes Bobby runs 30 or even 40 miles at a time. She is ready for the Boston Marathon. She requests an application. Finally, the answer comes. We will not be able to send you an application. Women are not physiologically able to run 26 miles. And furthermore, the rules do not allow it. Bobby crumples the letter and hurls it across the room. She races out the door. After hours of running, Bobby realizes something. She has a chance to show the world that these rules are wrong. She has a chance to show what women can do. She will run the Boston Marathon. For the race, Bobby decides she needs real running shoes. Since they don't make them for girls, she buys a pair of size six boys' shoes. New shoes will make her feet feel weightless, she thinks. She also finds a baggy sweatshirt that she hopes will help her blend in with the men. Finally, it is race day. Bobby hides behind some bushes while the registered runners gather near the starting line. Bang! The starting gun fires and Bobby stumbles out of the bushes to join the race. Before too long, Bobby hears some of the runners whisper, Is that a girl? She smiles nervously at them. They grin back. It is a girl! Great! They match her pace so they can run together. Are you going the whole way? I hope so. The sweatshirt is too hot, but Bobby is afraid to take it off. What if officials see a girl is running? The other runners reassure her. Take it off. We won't let them throw you out. Bobby flings away the sweatshirt. Onlookers notice. They cheer and scream for Bobby. It's a girl. There's a girl running. Go get him. Soon, everyone listening to the radio knows a girl is running the Boston Marathon. The marathon route passes a women's college, Wellesley. The students are waving for waiting for Bobby. There she is, they wave and shout. Do it, girl, go, 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 go. 19 miles, 20 miles, up Heartbreak Hill. 
Bobby feels confident. She is still running strong, but coming downhill, things change. Bobby learns the hard way that you should not race in new shoes. Her feet are covered with blisters that pop and bleed. Every step burns. She can barely move for the pain, but she never considers stopping. She will finish this race if she has to crawl. When Bobby crosses the finish line on her bleeding feet, the crowd goes wild. The first woman has run the Boston Marathon. It has taken her three hours and 20 minutes. She comes in 124. 291 men are still huffing and puffing behind her to the finish line. Cameras click. Reporters scribble in their notebooks. Even the governor of Massachusetts has come to the finish line to shake Bobby's hand. However, the race officials refuse to give Bobby a medal. They insist that rules are rules. But Bobby has shown that it's time for some rules to change. Bobby has shown the world that women, what women can do. When they hear about Bobby, other women and girls feel their legs twitch. They want to join the race too. Bobby's first race is over, but marathoning for women has just begun. The end. I just wanted to share a little bit more information about Bobby. She finished the 1966 Boston Marathon before two thirds of the male runners, but they refused to acknowledge her. They said, I know of no girl who ran the Boston Marathon. I know a girl who ran the same roads, but that is not the same thing. She also ran in 1967 and 68 without official sanction. And each time more and more unofficial females ran. Women were not allowed to officially compete in the Boston Marathon until 1972. And I personally want to thank Bobby Gibb for running the Boston Marathon and making it a thing that women can do. I have my very own marathon medal from the LA Marathon, and it's a hard thing to do. And women, women wouldn't even have had the chance without someone like Bobby Gibb leading the way. So thank you. I hope that you enjoyed our story today, and I'll have a good story for you again next time. Thanks. Bye.